Good evening and welcome to another Wednesday night of miniature painting. Uh, tonight we will keep working on the same models that we worked on last time, specifically the Abuela from the game Malifaux from the Guild Faction. But before we start working on her, I just need to give you an update on the model we uh, also worked on Sunday, which was Perita. Um, after the stream, I decided to just get her finished uh, doing the base, doing the last bit of shading and highlighting. Um, so yeah, I really like the way the purple hair turned out in, in the end. Let's get her in focus here. As you can see, it, it's visible, but it's not sort of dominating. So she still has the, the black hair, but it gives it the, the purple shine to it. So that actually went well. Um, but also, as you can see, I haven't really done much with her face because, again, these are tabletop uh, ready miniatures. They will be standing like this on a table. You will not be able to see her face during the game. And for me, that is with these models, that's what I'm, I'm mostly interested in, you know, making it look good on, on the table. So let us continue with Abuela. The old grandma in her steam-powered wheelchair. Um, we don't actually uh, need to do much more on her. Uh, I did a little bit of work on her as well, you know, doing the, the green ground. I also cleaned up the edge of the base after doing the, the senatal highlight with my airbrush. It gets kind of sort of grayish white with a little bit of fade on, on the edge and I prefer the, the, um, the black edges. So I did that. I also worked a little bit on the headlights um, here. They, what I've done is basically just giving them a very crude shade or sort of gradient from yellow at the bottom to, to white at the top, trying to emulate that, I don't know, white shines into the lights or whatever, but the, the core light of the, the lamp itself or the light is supposed to be yellow. Uh, that's the choice I made at least. So what we need to do then is to fix up her gun, fix up her hands, and then we have this very large sombrero underneath which the rest of Abuela is hidden. Um, so as you can see, there's just not a lot to do on her actually. And again, she'll be sitting like this um, in the wheelchair. So. And you see here, again, if we're going for tabletop rated miniatures, I will not be putting in uh, that much detail. I'll probably do some highlighting on her face because it, it takes up a little bit more uh, room than Perdita's did. So I might do that. But other than that, I mean, it's just a matter of painting her dress, the rest of it. Um, painting her face. I think I'll just shade her hair a little bit with some black just to keep it in sort of looking gray at least, doing the face, and then at the end, uh, fixing up the, the last sombrero, which I will basically just do you know, the same effect as I did with the coats on the other guys, which means playing around with some contrast paints. So, let's get to it. Um, let's start with the I'm going to start with the hands, I guess. So, it's also probably going to be a slightly shorter stream today on account of me just being tired and my computer actually. I don't know if it, if it crashed or whatever it did, but at least it rebooted itself just before I started work on the, the stream here. So that's always interesting. Let's see what we need here. Um, I am just looking around for all my paints and all my thinners and, and all that stuff to get things up and going. So, 
it seems like we're not really that many people today, which is not surprising since I haven't really um, advertised this anywhere. I could do that, I guess, but I could also just sit here and paint all by myself. Oh, Modifian is here. Hello, Modifian. I don't know if you got the uh, the intro. It always makes me happy to see you on. Oh, I have to watch my language. Yeah, I have to make it really, really, uh, really, uh, what's it called? Horrible and nasty. Otherwise, you will, you will not love me anymore. Yeah, you will leave leave me for someone else, like your wife or something. Truly really horrible. But then again, I do not. I have never claimed to be able to compete with your wife. Spicier. Well, so how spicy do you want it? Let's see if we can get a slightly better angle here. And maybe actually get some focus. So, well, um, speaking of spicy, uh, you actually started, you know, a story the other day that you never finished and you never actually sent me the continuation of that. And I'm really curious as to what you were, where you were taking that. Hey Cam, good to see you as well. So today we are continuing with the Malifaux miniatures, partly surprising. Uh, also, I really need to do something about... I think someone should invent a camera um, that is completely invisible. Yeah, now you can see my face. Oh, well, that's why I don't keep the camera up there. Um, but at least you'll be able to see what I'm doing, probably. Can I... Is it zoomed in all the way? Yeah, it is. So I can't even... Oh, that also won't work. How do I normally do this? Maybe like this? Yeah, whatever. Hey Cam, it's good to see you. So, how has your day been, everyone? Every two, whatever. No one died in the inauguration. Oh yeah, I completely missed that because work dragged on today. But I did keep sort of keep an eye on the news and I didn't see anything too horrible um, showing up. So I, I'm guessing it just went nice and quietly, which is always good. Um, doesn't matter where your political beliefs are. Lack of violence should always be considered a good thing. Hey Rex, there you go. Well, the beard is currently um, sidestepping due to the camera. Um, as I've complained about so many times by now, um, getting a good camera angle where I can both actually see what I'm doing and I can see what I'm doing and you can see my face, it's, um, it's not easy. So I need someone to invent a camera 
um, that is invisible. So I can just place it wherever it needs to be. Um, it also shouldn't take up any space at all, uh, so it's not in the way. Because even though, though it actually looks fairly okay now, then the way it's positioned makes it a little bit difficult for me to rinse off my brushes. Kind of have to sort of snake my arm underneath the camera. Yeah, well, you're VIPs, of course you are. Um, I mean, you're the guys who helped me. I mean, Modifian and some of the others have been here right from the start and supporting me and also people, some people I know in real life. Um, but you guys actually helped me crawl up over the 50 subscribers I need to get affiliate. Now I just need to get my head out of my unmentionable and actually stream enough that I you know hit the whatever it is seven days and eight hours or so and then I should get affiliate probably sometime next week and so yeah cool Rex I will look forward to getting the um the invisible camera I'm guessing you're doing that right after you um you, you get you uh, build your time machine right because you should should always build your time machine first because then you can go, can go out in the future to all the other inventions you're gonna gonna make bring them back and just immediately start using them yeah the time machine so So, but now nah, we we can use a bigger brush for her face. Hey, Wohan, welcome to you as well. Yeah, but I mean. You should always get a um, a good service deal on your time machine because you know a broken time machine really just messes things up. Also, what is that quote from the Hitchhiker's Guide? Um, something like "drunk in charge of a." time ship is a pretty serious offense so what is rex saying we're gonna have a chill day in discord on sunday you're more than welcome to join oh i would love that um i'm streaming from 7 ct but before that cool to must that tick the rules so you can have full access to discord Me? Did I forget to tick the rules? Uh, I ticked them at some point. Um, but maybe they changed and need to do them again. No, you, you, my mod. Well, who is my mod? Is my is Modifian in your Discord as well? Did I completely miss that? Or Wohan or whatever? You forgot about my stream tonight. Oh, right. Well, shit happens. So, now, um, Rex, I don't think I have any mods, any of my people in, in Discord. But thanks for pointing it out anyway. Too many mods. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Actually, earlier today, I saw a, a pretty nice stream uh, that a former co-worker of mine did. He always talks about you know, some weird software-related things, uh, software development-related things. Uh, Oleg, cool guy. He also has an awesome beard. Um, but they talked about Slack versus Discord, him and some of his, I think some of his colleagues. 
and it's really interesting to see some of their points about you know, getting access to it, um, the cost of, of the, um, well, Discord is essentially free, but you can do the, the Nitro and the boosting of a server, whereas Slack limits the number of total messages you can have. Um, so after a certain point in Slack, yeah. Okay, Rex, see you. Have a great stream. Maybe I will drop by once I'm done with Little Abuela here. Okay, so I've complained about this before, and I will probably complain about it again. See, scale color um, paint, really love the paints, really don't like the fact that they always seem to clog up completely um, in the tip there. So I will actually try to see if I can get I can see see if I can get paint all over the place because that seems like a good plan um, and then also see if I can just clean this up and I'm doing it off camera that's not nice of me so Speaking of mods, does someone want to ban QE123? Modifian? Wohan? Maybe? Anyone? Trying to, but forgot how to. Uh, I think that's why I have you guys. I don't know. Wow, well, I've never been a moderator in in Twitch. I think you just need to go activate the mod interface. Done. Thank you. It actually, seems like it is the. It seems like everything is just clogging up here. There we go. Thank you. This is deleted. User banned. That is how we do shit. Well, how you do shit, I guess. So, well, hopefully that helps a little bit, but we will just have to see. Cool, thanks to both of you. So there, that is a cleaned up paint pot, hopefully. Um, and a very messy pair of pliers. Thank you. I mean, I, 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 I think it's a really good idea to, to report these people, um, but with you know names like that, they're just going to be back again some other day. So there we go. And I'm not just throwing things on the on the floor here. Uh, that's actually a, um, what's it called trash bin over there. I see. I think it's when this here, um, when it dries up, but it really shouldn't. So I don't know why. I don't know anything. I just paint. Yeah, maybe they can use it to block IP addresses or some other thing. I don't really know. But it's far better to report them uh, and ban them than do nothing about it. Because doing nothing definitely get, gets no results. 
So thank you for that. Also, at some point, we should be talking about getting you two on the stream to do some painting. Um, would be fun. And I, I guess we could do it through, I don't know, setting up uh, some place on, on Discord and just having a chat and having you uh, here online, uh, maybe sharing the, the work you do. Or later this year, hopefully later this year and not next year, when the restrictions have been, been lifted, one of you could come out here if, if you want. So where are we? Here we are. So, I mean, I would of course prefer just having you out here, um, but again, with restrictions, that may not be an, be possible. So, if you want to try your hands at this whole being famous on the internet thing, just uh, let me know. Slumber party at my place? Well, I yeah, but we wouldn't be streaming the slumber parties now, would we? I think that might go against um, Twitch's guidelines. So, yeah, we, oh, so not on Twitch anyway. So, Moravian, where did you actually plan on, on streaming it then? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. You're completely innocent. You would never, never do anything, um, anything bad whatsoever. Pure innocence right there. Also, uh, interesting thing, we talked about, you know, mods and VIPs and so on just before. And apparently it turns out that at some point I, I got the, you know, 10 VIP slots, which is fine, which is cool. But unfortunately, I couldn't give it to, to you guys, uh, Wo and Modifian, simply because you were already modify, uh, uh, moderators. Moderators can apparently not also be... VVIPs. So I figured I would stick to having you as my moderators because that makes me feel very comfortable and in very capable hands. So Yeah, but I mean, th at least this at least is a, a Twitch limitation, and not not something I've any say in apparently. So, so let us get some blackout. Uh, need to shake it up a bit. So I'll. Yeah, I actually cleaned up the moderator list quite a lot, so I think we're down to about. Five or six mods. 
can't remember how many exactly. Um, I only kept the good mods. No, you're not VUPs, you're VMPs. You're very, um, very moderating people. So there. Yeah, well, that is um, the, the true sign of, of a, a real uh, moderator, you know, forgetting stuff. Also, my brush is splitting a little bit. Why is it doing that? So, what else is up with you guys? Anyone out there having fun? No, uh, oh, the brush? No, this is uh, not the brush I used for metallics. Um, that was having actually the, the even thinner good brush I have but this is just this one here um, it, it has a few hairs that go go astray once in a while but just cleaning it off rinsing it off and licking it a little bit that usually helps hey Siri that's cool um, just finish off work that's that's fine that's fine I'll just um, finish off the important work like painting miniatures Oh, and also, uh, yesterday, we had a really, really good D&D session. Um, you're playing Rugged League. That, that's fine. Oh, I should play Rugged League as well. Um, anyway, uh, we had a really good D&D session yesterday. We switched to 5e before Christmas at some point. Um, to get a new player that only played 5e in and all that. I, you, you know the story. So that's been, been fun, but they started out at level 3 or 4 or something like that. So they weren't completely new characters. And none of us have much experience with uh, those particular um, rules. So now they're up to level 6 and we kind of went what can these characters actually do because i generally don't run combat heavy scenarios i prefer the the role playing aspect and the social interaction and all those things and while there are a few dice rolls in, involved in you know talking to people um trying to i don't know seduce them intimidate whatever all those things do come with dice rolls a lot of the abilities in in D, &D especially in 5e are aimed at combat so we wanted to see how it, how it would go. So I had actually promised my players to do, well, for the second time, I promised to do a, a proper dungeon crawl where you just run around bashing up monsters, finding treasure, that, that kind of thing. Um, the first time I promised it, I completely failed because I just couldn't bring myself to do the whole, okay, so you enter this room, you see a bunch of orcs, they attack you. You enter the next room, you see a green dragon. It attacks you, or or whatever. Uh, you know the the classic, the monsters don't hear what goes on in the next door, style dungeon. Um, and I really didn't want to run that kind of scenario because it's just unbelievable, uh, unbelievable to to me. Uh, so, so, but this time I'd actually done a little bit better job of preparing uh, for this. So I actually worked in a little bit of plot into a what I thought was actually a small dungeon. I was kind of worried that we wouldn't have enough to go the, the entire evening. Uh, but in the end it turned out to be 
actually more than enough. So we usually play from around six in the evening until nine thirty ten ish. But when we started rounding down, just doing the whole okay, we'll we'll we've done the major part of of this now. So we'll we'll stop here and people can rest up and then we'll take it from here uh, next time we play. At that time, it was almost 11 o'clock in the evening. So we'd gone way over time, um, which is fine. That is fine, fine for me. Not so much fine for the guy who had to get up at six the next morning. And, but yeah. But it was really fun, really, really great experience. Um, basically nothing overly complex. I mean, we just did the usual um, run down a dungeon, um, they have been, the, the setup was that they ran into a merchant that had been um, uh, assaulted uh, by, or ambushed by some robbers, bandits. And he had fortunately seen which direction they took off to. So the idea was to have them run up there and defeat the bandits, find the goods for the, the merchant and everyone's happy. Right, you know, pretty classic standard hero kind of stuff. Um, and of course, the merchant wasn't really a merchant. He was one of the bandits who actually wanted to lure in the adventurers to take all their gear. Because bandits are like that. So, um, they kind of guessed that pretty quickly, um, which was fine. Uh, they'd seen no sign of it, they just... Sort of kind of did this whole, yeah, he's, he's probably going to double cross us in a little bit and all that. And, and then we laughed a little bit at that and then he, he double crossed them, of course. So that's, that was, that went pretty well. Uh, but basically just running around in a small cellar or underneath an abandoned mansion, um, blah, 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 blah. You, you get, you get the idea. So, but that actually went so much better than I had expected. Also, why am I finding white paint to paint the small skulls when the small skulls are already painted white? Why don't I just go straight for a sepia ink to make them look a little bit more sort of faded skull-ish? And what is... Did someone reverse gravity today? Because I think no, all, all my paint bottles are bubbling over today, so... Whoever uh, reverse gravity, can you please reverse it back? It's a little annoying. No. Anyway. Yeah, that was some little bit of sepia wash. Goes in here. If we can do this properly. That's actually that's actually a little bit too dark, I think. But it'll have to do. We'll just fix that in post production using a little bit of stuff to highlight it. Yeah, see you, Siri. Siri and Cal. Nice of you to drop by and say hello. And I look forward to our game on Friday. And I think I now that I have a fully painted crew, I, I have to play with them. So, so yeah, so Wohan is playing Rocket League, Sirin is heading off to do other stuff, and Modifian is writing the script for our quote-unquote slumber party stream. That's going to be interesting.
and I am here in the miniatures as always. No, but anyway, on, on to uh, last night's adventures in D&D. &D. Uh, as I said, it went, went pretty well. And for me, the, the challenge was to actually come up with some monsters and bad guys and, you know, blah, 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 that would work for six little characters in a game system that I haven't really been using much, uh, especially not for combat related stuff. So that was a little bit of a, of a challenge, uh, but I decided to give it a bit of a spin and have the bandit leader, who was the guy they, they met, the um, guy who posed as a merchant. So I decided that he at some point wanted to dip down a little bit into Warlock, because that always gives you stuff to mess around with. And found a patron from the Fey Realms, uh, the Lord of the Lake of Dreams. I decided to, to use him, Rasko Reth, I think it's called, something like that, if I pronounce it correctly. So that was that was fun. And on top of that, there was after he had done that, there was a bit of a schism with his second in command, his lieutenant, um, who didn't feel comfortable with all the weird stuff that started happening uh, after after he made this deal, the, the leader. So she had been trying to um, get some of the, the other bandits on her side and maybe just throwing him out. Two goals in the last 17 seconds for 3 to win. Congratulations! So that brought you up from a 1-2 whatever being behind is called um, to an actual win. Sweet. So no, so they have their schism and his plan was to bring in the adventurers, of course, steal all their stuff and then hopefully also um, use them to kill off his lieutenant because he knows he cannot do it on his own and then um, after that, Whoever wins, it, depending on, you know, doesn't matter if it's the, the uh, adventurers or if it's the second command that wins after that battle, whoever wins should be somewhat damaged. So he could probably pick them off with the help of a few loyal bandits. And that kind of went well, both his plan and my plans, um, until we found out what a level six sorcerer can do with fireballs. That got that actually turned really grim um long story short they're just you know running around in the in the crypt uh the, the basement down uh beneath the mansion they find the crypt where with some very strategically well positioned skeletons um did absolutely nothing to make them think they came alive and which they didn't it was just sort of trying to trick them into believing that the next thing they should fight was skeletons. Uh, but they put them a little bit on their edge. So when they got into the room where the uh, the second in command and some of her people were, were hanging out, the paladin, being the hero that he is, opens the door, blah, 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 and they just start firing crossbows and throwing daggers at him, whatever they have. So the sorcerer decides that, whoops, something bad is going on in there. I better help. And help means, hey, I can throw a fireball down into this corner and it shouldn't take out the paladin, but it will probably take out most of what is in the, in the room in here. Cool, I will do that, said the sorcerer and did it twice. With the result that basically Almost everyone in the room more or less just burned to crisp pretty pretty effectively. Um, the only survivor was one of the four prisoners that the the bandits had you know taken just a while ago. So it's basically a merchant family that got roasted um, except for their 13 year old child. So now they have to kind of deal with that as well. Uh, but after this, you know, seeing the his second in command being completely blown up by these people, um, the bandit leader kind of maybe panicked just a little bit and just tried running away and wanted to run into the the other part of his lair, uh, looking for some more of his um, what's called uh, loyal people, 
Unfortunately, since he has not been a very good warlock, he has not really pleased his patron. So, um, his uh, his patron, you know, the the Lord of the Lake of Dreams, Raskoreth, whatever, uh, decided that he needed to be taught a lesson about not doing his homework. So Raskoreth has, in the meantime, well, while he was out tricking the adventurers into coming back with him, uh, Raskoreth shows up in his lair and basically converts uh, his remaining loyal bandits to uh, ghouls and a single white, just for spiciness. So he runs back, tries to find them, realizes what has happened, panics even more, because now he not only has to, to um, worry about these horrible, evil adventurers trying to kill him, uh, he also has to worry about a very angry patron. So he tries you know, talking to, to these ghouls and trying to make the ghouls go attack the, the adventurers. And it kind of kind of actually happens, not because of anything he said, because the, the way the, the patron did it was just... Um, just basically just doing a okay. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the rest of your, your bandit crew and make them into ghouls, but I'm also not gonna make them kill you because I can still use you for something. But he couldn't um, use the ghouls. He couldn't command them. They just did not attack him. So uh, I need to find some good shade for Abuela. I think we're gonna go gonna go strong tone to get a bit more power to it so so anyway while he's running around panicking um trying to trying to get the ghouls to attack the adventurers the adventurers actually finally show up and come running in one of them runs ahead of the others uh runs up sees the ghouls kind of panics runs back in the meantime the ghouls run up and battle commences this is where the uh, sorcerer with the fireball shows up again, and more or less just again incinerates the ghouls. The ghouls didn't die, um, but they were more but basically just well, one of them died, and the remaining five or so um, were down to two hit points, meaning that whoever actually just hit them just a little bit afterwards just insta killed the the remaining ghouls. Uh, the white was a little bit more of a problem, also because the, the paladin ended up in, in close combat with it. Um, and the paladin, unfortunately, he, he was unlucky with his rolls. So the first many, many uh, attacks he, he put into the, the white didn't actually hit. But he finally managed to pull off a smite combined with brandy. It's called brandishing smite. So, yeah, no more white. Um, so anyway on to the chase they chase after the bandit leader into the uh, rear end of the of the, uh, the hideout and all those things they finally find him about to be sucked into a portal into the lake of dreams itself so just imagine a huge three four meter wide portal at the end of the room and his is caught in it in kind of this I cannot stop myself I know it's wrong to go in it um, but I have to keep going towards this uh, this place here blah 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 that was at least that was my um, description of it so let's just leave Abuela you can see how nice that that face actually just turns out just from base color and a shade uh, it really brings out it's still it's still wet so it's glistening a little bit but you can see the lines so much more clearly from, from this. So anyway, on to this bit over here. So uh, anyway, the adventurers come in, see him about to be dragged through the portal against his will, and for some reason decides to stop him. I think they probably want to bring him back for some justice, um, put him for in front of a magistrate or whatever. So anyway, four adventurers, including a paladin in fairly heavy armor, piles onto this poor guy who's just trying to go through the portal. I mean, you can't even can't even do that without being interrupted by adventurers these days. And when they finally drag him out of the room, uh, I decided that that's where the um, 
um, the portal closes. They did have a, a few attempts at themselves getting caught in the in the portal, but it didn't bite on any of them. They 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 did all the saves, managed got through all the saves. So anyway, they've now caught this guy, and he's basically just collapsed um, on top of all the, the the things he's been through. It's been a it's been a busy day for him, uh, seeing his entire gang get killed. His second in command that he had hoped to to um, get rid of, well, he got rid of her, but not in a way that made it possible for him to do anything about the adventurers afterwards. So he's basically just lost his gang, lost his hideout, lost all the, the items he's worked so hard at stealing from other people. Um, so yeah, he just collapses and that's where they decided to take a break. So they, they found lots of treasure, lots of interesting stuff. I mean, it is a bandit lair. They have all the things they've been uh, stealing for the past couple of weeks were in there and, and all that. So now they have to find find a way to get it all back and maybe try to, to sell it somewhere without it being too obvious that they really are, are fencing stolen goods. Um, I'm especially curious to see how the paladin handles that situation. Um, but yeah. That was... That was the story of my D and D group yesterday. What they were up to. So we need a little bit of metallic for the gun and we will so, oh, that was silver. We're going again, we're going with the aptly named gun metal, not because it's called gun metal and it's a gun, but simply just because it's a it's a nice color to, to work with for the for the metal parts. In the meantime, let us send out some thoughts to Wohan, hoping that his next um, Rocket League match also goes well. I have now actually tried Rocket League, and I must say I am incredibly good at it in the one and a half minute or so that I've played it I managed to miss the ball a lot of times uh, jump into the air completely missing the ball and missing the ball and sending it in another way than I had hoped to so I think I had a lot of potential for becoming a good rugged league player um, might actually play a little bit tonight if I'm not too tired so so yeah but anyway uh, yeah so D&D yesterday was great fun and yeah let's get let's get up wheel into frame again let's not get the lamp into frame so yeah That actually reminds me, Modifian, um, what about your... You had a TND and d group starting up somewhere online, didn't you? Some of the... What, some of the people you play Among Us with? And we also have the... Oh, yeah, we have the Forbidden Lands group. That never really got picked up again. Um, after our DM and one of the players got a small kid. Yeah. I've got a small kid. They got a child. No. Which is cool.
So there we go. Gun, a little bit shiny, kind of visible. That is what we're going for. Uh, okay, so, but if you write, we ruined the DM's big baddie and she sulked and told us we better not talk about it to the other group. We were amused and triumphant. I almost got a spider wife, but failed my role, thank God. Yeah, I can imagine that being awkward, coming home with a second wife. So, so yeah. What do we have down here? All right, we just need a little bit more. See, she's got the... Uh, it's called what a bandolero or whatever a gun belt uh, or ammunition belt there and it kind of looks a little metallic because it the I thinned down the the black paint before uh, putting it on so it, it, it sort of seeped down in the recesses but I will just discreetly and gently highlight it dry brush it with some metal color to make it even more shiny and that is it. There's a little bit up there as well. Cool. Now the next bit, I think we're just going to do a little bit of highlight on the skulls as well. Just because it's it's one of the details that kind of defines her. So I want to make them, make them good. But yeah, but Modifian, you should be careful what you do in role-playing games. I mean, spider wife. Really, how did you even end up in that situation? Uh, I mean, yeah, you failed a roll uh, to avoid it, but why were you even in that situation? I mean, really? So here, just a smidgen of, and even though I'm actually using the white highlight here, uh, they remain the underlying color from the sepia wash. So it's it's all good. Just didn't want them to be no. I mean, she is running around with these uh, around her head, so I didn't want them to be completely sort of brown and rotten. I don't think bones rot as such, but I didn't want them to look look old and and ugly and disgusting. They're just skulls. They're supposed to be looking mean and nasty and giving her mean and nasty look as well. So yeah. So there we go. That's the skulls all done. Hmm. At least close enough. Oh, I am way behind. Uh, so one got another win. Congratulations, Rug League. I roll to attack the spider first of roll. Or blah blah blah. Watch your charisma. Blah blah blah. You fail. Okay, so well, who's to say that the spider wasn't a bot? So basically, it's the you tried to attack the spider and it almost seduced you. Yeah, Rohan, you need more role playing. <clears throat> Also, did I forget to... I probably did. Yeah, as I said, um, my computer actually crashed just before uh, going, going live with the stream. So that is why you have not had any music so far. And the music, as always, is the talented Adrian von Siegler, who lets people use his music for free because he's such an awesome guy. So. Should be going now. I tried to attack a spider in character and my potty mouth almost got me in trouble. Well, I cannot for the life of me imagine your potty mouth getting you in trouble. I mean, that, that just does not compute. So we'll just do some quick highlights here on the on the red parts just to get her going and 
I mean, I should maybe I should have painted the wheelchair red and argued with my opponent that since the the wheelchair is now red, it goes faster, so she should get a plus one move. I think that would be... Uh, I would be able to make a good, strong argument for that. So... Okay, this is, um, I've talked about with, with her uh, abuela that I'm painting on here. Um, I'm doing, you know, painting her before I actually put her completely together. Because it's going to be nearly impossible for me to get to all the, the places that need uh, paint once she's actually glued um, into the, the wheelchair. But holding on to the model like this is... A little bit of a trouble, a problem for me. I almost drop her all the time. So, but we're still going. Still shading her, still highlighting, and just building it up. But again, this part here is probably mostly going to be hidden by um, the kettle, a boiler. So, raising stripes at aerodynamics, that is so true. Um, red paint and racing stripes, and you, yeah, I mean, that's the fastest car you're ever going to get. So, so yeah. No, 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 uh, Modifian, I just saw your other comment. Red make cars faster, faster. Flames make them even faster. So both flames and red. I mean, that, that doesn't get any better. In the old days, um, Citadel actually released a paint called Go Faster Red. The faster is spelled F A S T A. Um, and rumor had it that in the old, one of the old versions of Warhammer 40,000, if you actually painted your orc speeder bikes, war bikes of some kind, if you painted them red, um, they actually got a higher movement, movement rate. I don't know if that was actually thought into the game to begin with, so they were balanced if they were red. Uh, and worse if they weren't. But and I also don't know if it's just an, an old story, that, just a legend, but it doesn't matter. It's a good story. I, I like to think that it's true. So. So let's drop a little bit of highlight on here. So, I mean, a lot of the highlights I'm doing here is actually more sort of negating the effect of the black shade I put on. So we pull it back into the, the normal red. Uh, it kind of serves as highlight, I guess. Uh, but...
but still it makes it look a little bit better. Also, I do not know why my brush has decided to get a small sort of blob at the end. Um, like if there's a small bit of grit or something uh, in the paint. Gone now, but still a bit annoying. So yeah. Oh, it's already 8 o'clock. I would really like to get this finished today. So let's just brush it just a little bit. Not too much though. Don't want to make any unforgivable mistakes. Do we want... There we go. That's me hitting the camera. That's the first time tonight. It's not too bad. So... Yeah. So, well, back to role-playing games. Another thing to talk about there is progression and, you know, the whole XP thing that I kind of went through again. You know, setting up a essentially a dungeon crawl. I had to go into, you know, looking at generating combat encounters that would fit the, the power level of the group. And that means looking at the XP of monsters and you know, also, of course, calculating how much XP should they have after, afterwards. But the way we're actually doing it, as one of my, my players reminded me today after I had given them the experience uh, points, we've actually switched since we're all doing the same level in a way. And if someone doesn't show up, they still get the full XP because we don't want to have a level gap between the characters. That has always been our experience, that level gaps in D&D, yeah, sure, one level is probably not gonna be a big deal, uh, two or more, it's gonna be too too much of a, a gap for it to be fun for anyone because one character is just gonna go, you know, low level characters are gonna be severely challenged um, and cannot keep up with what the high level characters can do or if I adjust it to the low level characters, then the high level characters are just going to be bored. And we don't want that. Um, so instead, we just make sure that everyone is the same level. So much easier. And besides, we don't really care about the whole bookkeeping, account keeping and stuff like that. But also, instead of actually keeping track of, of XP and having me go, oh, so you killed six ghouls, that gives you 1200. Uh, experience points and that's split out into four characters so that's 300 each and then blah 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 um yeah more free from rpg and on, on free from rpgs the level usually don't matter that much anyway because it's more about you know talking your way through things um so yeah so for for the rules parts of it we just prefer keeping uh people on the same level simply because then when we do have some kind of fight or anything, um, there's less chance that someone will be left behind or just completely wasted on the first uh, hit, which would be a shame. So, um, so what we've, we're trying to do instead that I'm adopting from the uh, West Marches style campaign we're running with the Encourageable Party is uh, the way that's mentioned in the back of Sanitas guide to everything I think it's called um, and that is basically just to uh, just find that one it's just to award uh, you never kept track of XP Warren writes that he never kept track of XP as a DM he often pretend but actually just wing it does it feel like the group has done enough to grant them a level exactly that that's kind of also well that is what we're doing now as well uh, and it's more or less what I've always been doing <clears throat> in, in these kind of games. So that makes sense. Uh, but we just formalized it a little bit. In the back of Sanitas, they formalized it even more. Um, maybe a bit too much, actually. Uh, I think it comes from the Adventures League style of play. Um, 
where they basically award oh shit am i no it's going it's good i just thought i was about to knock the wheelchair off the base uh, now what they do there is they actually award xp based on how many hours you've played and that's again because adventures league and and that kind of system is a setup where you have um different dms stepping in from time to time so you you really need to uh make some some way of making it standardized otherwise people are gonna say oh i want to play with that dm because i know he gives a lot of xp and a lot of pressure but i don't want to play with that other dm because i never get any treasure there so so that kind of makes sense i guess um let me just check i think i'm done with what needs to be painted here and I think I'm done with what needs to be painted here. So I basically just need to glue her together and add some grass to the base. And we'll be fine. So yeah, but I think you know, doing the whole, now you played for eight hours, therefore you gain a level. Um, doesn't appeal that much to me. Uh, but on the other hand, that is roughly the same time amount of time we play anyway. Um, so... I might just, yeah, I mean, what I what I like about it, as opposed to the whole, you've killed this monster, now you get XP, I like the fact that it actually, um, award, uh, not award, uh, rewards people showing up and actually playing. Uh, of course, it doesn't say anything about their level of commitment, but as I say, yeah, GM's prerogative. And... I'm not going to do it sort of strictly, um, so as strict as that, in the sense that, okay, so now you've played for eight hours, then you have to get a level. But as sort of a guideline or rule of thumb, I think it, it fits pretty nicely. Um, we usually play about three to four hours uh, on our Tuesday group. And I've usually gone for a new level every two or three game sessions. So it kind of hits the somewhere between seven and ten hours of game time uh, anyway. So I'm just going to stick to doing the you gain levels when I say you gain levels approach because it works. Yeah, we, we've done the, the in other game systems, we've done the whole um, viewer XP for people who don't show up. But then you're going to have the level gap. Um, and usually, at least in the group I play with, the, the reason people don't show up are things like um, my mom went to the hospital or stuff like that. And if you go, oh, so you chose to go visit your mom in the hospital, well, I'm going to duck you in XP. That just kind of makes me feel like a shitty person. So, and, and again, I don't care too much about these things. Um, I also kind of, the, the kind of DM will go if, if you really want to try to play a character that has maxed out uh, all the stats then then why not i mean let, let's go for it let's see what happens i'm guessing that it's going to be boring at some point either for for that character or for the the other characters in the group um but i'm more inclined to letting people play the characters they want to play um instead of trying to to pull you know pull out the book and say, no, you can't because this, this and that and so on. I mean, yeah, the, sure, the rules should, should be followed to, to general degrees to be, be consistent. Um, but yeah, that's just me. I just prefer having fun and make, playing fun games with people I like. That's always my, my prime interest with, with these games and you know, following the rules and all that is secondary. Um, which also means that I always... I mean, I, I, I understand why, why people do it, and, and I think it's awesome that they do, but I always get this kind of small smile or whatever when I hear people going stuff like, oh, and then I found this magical item, and now I'm strong. I just went, sure. Uh... Yeah, storyteller-based 
Yeah, so you don't have the levels, you don't have the gap. Uh, played a lot of Shadowrun, 2nd and 3rd edition, primarily. And really, really like it. It's just, for those not in the know, Shadowrun is a purely uh, skill-based system. Uh, well, you, you have your abilities like uh, strength and so on, uh, but for your skills, you don't have you don't have a class. Is what I'm trying to say. You don't have a level. You just buy whatever skills you want. So if you want to, um, if you want, you can have, be a magic user. That's also a badass close combat fighter, or you can be any kind of combination. It's a cyberpunkish. Uh, role-playing games you have computer hackers or diggers as they're known in, in that world so you can have all of those things as well and still combine it with whatever so so it's not like you when you have a wizard in DD they're generally not that good at you know close combat fighting um, except they they can be now you can can do some pretty fun builds uh, with them but a classic in Shadowrun is a mage that, as a backup, has a shotgun and is really good at, at using it. Yeah. So, as Rohan also writes, XP, Karma, Force Points are given on a session slash adventure basis. And the, the difference here from games like D&D with levels is that in Shadowrun and I'm guessing also Star Wars, I played the old, old, old Star Wars game from the 90s or so and they also had this you improve your skills you know one at a time as you go along you don't gain a level and then get a certain number of skill points you just use the reward like xp in in D, &D to improve your current skills it's the same in uh, earthdawn which does have levels but the levels you, you gain the levels once you have um, a certain number of what they're called talents once you have a certain number of talents at a certain level, then you gain access to the next level. And that opens up new talents you can use. And then you still have to buy those up from you know, rank zero and blah, 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 going on from there. So while you do have the, the level gap uh, in, in Earthdawn, it's more along the line of what do you gain access to than... Um, Things like hit point and bonuses to hit or stuff like that. That comes from your talents primarily. So, and stats and abilities and all that. So, yeah. Um, exactly. And the, the gap in these kind of games is not the level gap. Uh, if it is anything at all uh, gap wise, then it's more of a. Oh, she is. She has come a little bit loose poor old grandma so let's just glue her up again but the gap comes from uh, the player's choice for that character so if a player chooses to be bad at fighting then they're going to be bad at fighting which is which is fine because it's a it's a conscious choice it's a role-playing choice um, and I really I really like that kind of game but then again now we just play D&D because so much has happened since we played last time. Um, I mean, the last time any of us, of us really played D and D before this summer was AD and D Second Edition. Um, so that was quite a while ago. So we wanted to test it out, see see how the system has evolved, and so far, our conclusion, at least mine, and I think at least some of the others agree a little bit, is that since we are mainly doing um, story based role playing anyway. Whatever system we use doesn't really matter. I mean, we we could do this using Earthdawn or Warhammer or whatever. Um, so yeah. So now we're as much just sticking with Fifth Edition to test it out, uh, which is it's more about getting options, getting power. Yeah, absolutely correct, Rohan. Um, but for for this group, I mean, we kind of just I was just rolling with the the D and D five E to to see where it takes us. And again, since it doesn't really matter which system we're using in a way, then why not just stick to to this one here? It works quite nice. Um, 
yeah, I'm just here on Abuela, just again overcorrecting a bit to before adding what is I think the last color on her. It's just gonna be the the sombrero that needs to get a heavy dose of contrast paint, and I think then we can move on to the base. So I should be able to finish that in 40 minutes, which is cool. So... We've got this one here. So yeah, but anyway, to me, the, the as I said so many times by now, the most important part for me is actually just hanging out with cool people. Um, the group I, I played with yesterday, these are people I've known for one of them. I think one of them and I actually have our 25th anniversary this month. Because it was, yeah, it was 96. We met January 96. And we started out meeting just as role players, and it turned into a yeah, friendship. And then the others have joined in over time. So I've known known and played role playing games with these people for well over twenty years. Um, so we know a lot about the style of play and how to to um, which buttons to push, you know, role playing game wise to to get some some good reactions and get stuff going. And yet, after so many years, we can actually still surprise each other once in a while with the characters we make or the choices we take or whatever. Uh, so, so much fun to, to be had playing with these guys. I really, really love doing that. Um, so, we are probably, we'll probably still be playing 20 years from now. Let's see what else. What else have we changed? Yeah, so one thing I also wanted to do and use a, a sort of more regular dungeon crawlies thing is uh, magic items and rewards in general. Because since we've been so focused in other groups, um, or the other games we've played, same people, uh, just different games, um, we've not really had the the need to put in a lot of magical items or a lot of money and all that because a lot of the the monetary needs have just been role played um like we do a favors for whatever and then we just have a place to stay or whatever that you know that 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 kind of thing so we haven't had to do the bookkeeping aspect of it because it, it just gets boring you know having to shell out two and a half gold piece every time you go into an inn and you have to pay for every single beer you drink at the inn or glass of wine or whatever. That's the tedious, boring, and has nothing to do with role-playing games, if, if you ask me. Uh, that's more along the lines of computer games or spreadsheets or whatever. Um, so we've usually just glossed that over because at some point um, an adventuring group has the funds on a daily basis to just stay at an inn. And yeah, so we don't, you know, subtract money when they stay at an inn. But I also, as a DM uh, and the other people who have DM'd, don't really give a lot of money as rewards because it all sort of works works out in the end. It, it evens out or whatever. Um, they don't get money. Uh, I don't charge them money to you know for daily living expenses and stuff like that. It just makes it easier and allows us to focus on the game itself. Um, but when we started doing D&D again, uh, both the 3.5 where we started this summer and also in 5th edition, the whole concept of magic items shows up. Because D&D without magic items, it, to me it kind of feels like it's only half the game you're playing. And I know it isn't because again, blah blah blah, role playing games, blah blah blah, rules don't matter, blah blah blah. Uh, but I wanted to, to chuck some, some, uh, some magical items at them. I wanted them to run around with 
magic swords or bags of holding or what whatever uh, you know th those kind of arts typical damn she's looking good So, um, but since we've had so many years of not really getting a lot of uh, rewards, I actually found out that my players are not very good at looking for them. Um, they will happily go down and do some stuff and all that, and then just wander off again. Instead of, you know, they, they don't normally do the whole, okay, we're going to search this place from top to bottom. Um, open every single door, open every single chest, you know, that, that kind of thing. They rarely do that. Um, but yesterday, you know, since I'd actually, we'd agreed on, on doing this as a dungeon crawl, they actually did it and got a lot of stuff so that they need to figure out what is and, and isn't then. So that was, um, that was a different experience also, you know, when, when prepping for it, having to go, okay, so I actually need to give them the money because they're probably going to look this time. So I needed to prepare and actually make some decisions. Like how much money would a bandit carry around in his purse? I mean, are we talking a few copper, a few silver, lots of gold? I mean, what, what level are we at with, with these kind of, uh, kind of people? So, so I did. And looked a little bit about, you know, power level and stuff like that and, and, and decided in the end, and since these bandits, they, they had some, some gold on them. Fine, whatever. But what their, most of their valuables were actually uh, tied up in the, the things, the trade goods that stolen from various caravans and so on. Which means that they are now currently sitting in this cellar. Um, I found all these things and found a lot of valuable stuff that they, they can make some money off. But they don't have a wagon, so they, they don't have any way to, to really bring all of this uh, back to civilization. So that's going to be their next challenge. Anywho, that's kind of Abuela. I'm just going to give the base a little bit of grass uh, as much as I can. But I think that turned out pretty well. Yep. The good old days in D&D where you got one XP per gold piece worth of treasure you found or whatever, unless you were a thief, well, that was ad and I think. In ad and the thief got two experience point, points um, per gold piece worth of treasure they, they found. So yeah, back then you learned to loot everything there was, uh, and we did that as well way back in the day. Um, that's probably actually before I played with these people. But then this group, since it's not been about picking up small bits and pieces here and there, it's always more been about the large rewards. Like we're doing this for the local baron. We get a house somewhere. We have enough money because part of that house includes money enough to, to live on. But it was a, it was an interesting experience, you know, sort of going Going, I don't. I want to. Don't want to say back to basics. More sort of like back to my roots is probably a better, better way of phrasing it. So, but anyway, for the glue, we will actually be thinning up some regular, all-round PVA glue, um, PVA glue, wood glue, uh, hobby glue, whatever, whatever you call it. And I like to do that because the thin down glue just sits a little better on the base and makes it easier to, to put in the grass. <clears throat> I will also not be using my good brushes for the glue. I will be using some cheap crabby brushes. Now, Danish people will recognize um, Grene art as Søstrene Grene, which is a little bit like the dollar store in the US, I think. Um, so anyway, a little bit of glue and just single drop of um, water. You've never heard of Søstrene Grene. I find that very hard to believe.
Oh well, the brushes. Well, um, the brushes are what they are. Uh, it's just the 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 fact that if I say that they come from Sustan again, I'm guessing that most Danish people will know that it's not expensive brushes. That was kind of my point. So no, the the, the label itself. No, um, I wouldn't probably wouldn't be able to recognize it either. But no, the Sustan again part is the is the clue. So just getting the glue on nice and just smearing, smearing it out, making sure that it actually stays. It, it still subtracts a little bit despite having water in it, um, but that's fine. It'll all work, work out in the end. See, this is where I should probably have made the base before gluing this massive wheelchair on it. Okay. I will not ask why you don't buy there. Well, at least I won't ask today. I probably will some other time. Ah, I. Then I think I kind of have an an idea of why you don't want to buy there. But anyway, that's that's fine. That's fine. We are fortunately living in a free enough world that you are not forced to buy at Suston again. But if I ever do decide to you know fulfill my my plans for total world domination, I will make you go. To Susan again every single day and buy Akasan so we can play it at night. So, I mean, it's annoys me a little bit that that it it's pulling. You know, the the glue is sort of cracking a little bit. Um, wait, am I to take it that you're not going to support my my move for total world domination? Then, gotta say, I'm disappointed. So. Anyway, that is the glue being done. And let's just, once I'm done with the glue, I actually try to clean it out um, immediately to avoid. Otherwise, it's just going to harden down in, in the palette here and eventually mess it up. So that was it. Just get some standard grass for this with that we're gonna pull it out of the paint handle and basically just put it on here like so and don't if you do this uh, at home and you definitely should uh, especially if you like doing miniature painting and all that don't worry about getting too much uh, grass on here that's not going to be a problem. It's just going to be loose. Uh, it's only going to stick where you actually put down the glue. So after a while, once it's settled a little bit, you can basically just flip the model upside down, tap it gently. Careful not to knock off the, uh, the model. And that is, that is kind of it. So, 
So here we go. That is Abuela finished. That turned out a lot better than I'd hoped. Yeah, I've, uh, definitely that, that is not the kind of grass you want to smoke. Um, I had not entirely sure what it's made of, but I can not. It cannot be healthy. Actually, it doesn't say what it's made of. It's just the address and the name and that is. Actually, uh, the Army Painter is a Danish company, uh, but it still says made in France on this one. So apparently, I guess they have a uh, have a factory down there. <laughs> but anyway, that was Abuela. And with her being done, I think what would be really nice to do now is to bring out the entire team. Just for a quick uh, group photo shoot. So just put away my wet palette. See how we for time still have about half an hour. So that is that is perfectly fine. Mm. So anyway, we have Abuela. And I'll also see if I can maybe get the light a little better. I do like this. I can get things a little better if I reposition the camera for you guys. So let's bring it down here. Okay, this is this is not what you're supposed to do while live, but who cares? I've never really cared much about what you should and shouldn't do. There we go. And yeah, I'm going back and forth a little bit because I actually have a, a chair that swivels. Um, so pushing everything around is a little interesting. But anyway, here we have... Abuela, we have Santiago, we have Francisco, we have Perdita coming in. Just there. We have more people. I'm digging them out of my um, uh, carry bag. So it's a little tricky getting them on. Anyway. Just position these people here. Yeah, that looks pretty neat, doesn't it? There's a little bit more of a white background now. So yeah, there we go. My first fully painted manifold crew. Um, I think that went pretty well. I mean, it looks pretty goddamn cool. And yeah, it's a unified color scheme. That's the was the plan the whole way through. Um, getting them done nicely. Uh, wait, I can do. I can do. I can do. I can do this. Is that brighter? Okay, why didn't I find this setting earlier? That would have made my actual streams so much easier for you guys to see what goes on. But anyway, there we go. Now, Francisco, Nino, Papaloco, Santiago, Perdita, Abuela, and the enslaved Nephilim, Fallen Angel. Well, I. It's it's a camera. I, I would like to say that it's a new camera, but I've had it for what three or four months by now. But I've never used it as a camera. I've just used it for for streaming here. So I've not really done much uh, uh, research into how it how it actually works. And most of it just went on in, when it went to video mode. It just went. Oh, so these are the settings. You cannot change them. But I found out how to change the shutter speed. I found out how to change the uh, f-stop. Uh, aperture value so you, i got a little bit wider focus band 
But now I also actually find found the part where it tries to compensate for lighting. So this should make it a lot easier to see what happens on the streams. Which is pretty fun and cool. So um I think that this is where I'm I'll end the stream for tonight. I have thought about maybe doing some dry brush stencil highlight just to show how it's done. But to be honest, I can't really be bothered. So um, I'm just happy getting Abuela here all done. She's running around there, headlights shining, and feels good. Always feels good to finish a project. And this was my winter project, painting up the entire Padita crew. So yeah, I definitely have to play with these guys on Friday in my game there. So I also need to take a few pictures of them um, so I can get a good thumbnail for the stream and you know those kind of things. So yeah. But as always, it has been a pleasure hanging out with you guys. And I think we should go pay a visit to another bearded guy called Corpse Throat. He's also one of the people who hang out here once in a while. Uh, he's currently playing Rocket League. I don't know, Wohan, are you, are you playing Rocket League with these guys yet? Or have you gotten to, to that part uh, yet? So... You're just soloing. Well, that is also very cool. Um, I should, I mean, I might actually, if you want to want to play, um, I'll join you in a little bit when I've, I've cleaned up the stream and, and stuff like that. Uh, but as I said, I played it for about a full minute so far. I'm terrible at it, but ah, still be still be fun. So anyway, um, thank you for joining. Thank you for keeping me company. Thank you for sharing. And as always, keep painting.